The concept of fraternity is straightforward, and especially in today's world, its necessity is undeniable. Fraternity implies a kind of kinship, not just among siblings, but also within a broader community that share common convictions, struggles, and ideals. This is precisely the topic that we will be exploring in today's episode. Hi, I'm Naika, your host. Today, we will join Anatole as he interviews individuals from all continents, except Antarctica, and representing diverse backgrounds, nationalities, genders, and religions. Despite their differences, they share two things. They've embraced the teaching of Ombram, and they have experienced firsthand life at the fraternal centers around the world, those that Carmen beautifully described in the last episode. Ombram once said, I quote, for humans to come to respect each other, it is not enough to be told that they are sons and daughters of a heavenly father. The proof? Most often, religions have not only been made up of families fighting each other, but even within a religion, there have been so many conflicts, so many persecutions. But true children of God are those who find God in the religion of others. For God is in the soul of all men and women. This understanding is crucial to bringing about a more peaceful and fraternal world. I think that it is this realization which constitutes the unspoken thread along the interviews. Enjoy. Born into the spiritual teaching of Omram, Rosaline transcends the roles of musician and artist to embody something far greater. Her art, spanning musical compositions, videos, mantras, poetry, and crystal ball sound therapy, guides her fellow human beings back to their hearts, reconnecting them with their inner beauty and divine essence. When I asked my first question, who is Rosaline? Her answer was a song, capturing her vision an invitation to embrace our true nature, our deepest essence, and what we truly are, light. This is the question, actually, that I've been asking myself all my life. All my life. I'm here with Rosaline today. Yes. You've come to the Bonfire quite a lot, mm. for quite a long time. What do you tell your friends back home who may not be familiar with the Brotherhood? I'm quite um, open and happy to, to mm -hmm. talk about it to, to some people. And I like to say that here it is um, basically like a big family. We are all brothers and sisters. We share together. We, we share uh, beautiful spiritual um, activities. The, what is really interesting is that uh, the master send us, I think, some really interesting experiences that are like customized, for, that are perfect for us. Mm -hmm. You also go to the Chandor, another center where yeah. you live close by. Yeah. What's different there compared to the Bonfa? There is a space for creativity, flexibility, um, a present moment. We did a lot of beautiful things, dancing, singing, um, artistic shows um, there and um, I've been really marked by all these experiences. New art. art and uh, you're doing new art yourself. Yes, I, I mean, I tend to. <laughs> I am into this, this um, yeah. You have some videos uh, online yes, on YouTube. Yes, we'll yes. might put them down here. Yes, sure. And you do music, you do... Yes, I compose. Uh, actually, for me, it's been such a process to, to come to here. Because when I was younger, I was shy. I didn't speak so much. Uh, I was um, scared by, you know, even talking in front of an audience or singing even more. 
And um, I, I came to this uh, little by little work on my voice to, to, to compose, to, to take the time to explore more about music and to just uh, express my creativity. Yeah, and finally, um, yeah, little by little, I, I, I could uh, offer creations uh, to, um, yeah, through, through videos, uh, with YouTube or with social media. Um. <laughs> you mentioned you were shy when you were younger. Yeah. And now you're open, you're present, uh, the flower open, so to speak, yeah. to use an agricultural metaphor. <laughs> <right here. laughs> What do you think brought about this change? Is there anything particular you can discuss or...? Very important question, so deep, um, I think. In my case, I think each of us, we have our own journey. But in my case, it was uh, more the um, very strong experiences that was difficult. Um, so it's about suffering, in my case. Um, I had some important, um, big suffering in my life, but I, I am extremely sensitive and I had to really uh, work on this uh, and to transform this, this, this suffering and how can I transform them, how can I survive? <laughs> because when you have a tsunami of emotions, all kinds of emotions, it can be really, you know, overwhelming. So, um, yeah, in my case, it was uh, about just healing, releasing, uh, harmonizing my emotions and transforming my, my suffering. And like the flowers, they, they, they have winds, they have all kinds of weather, they have rain, they have storms. They, like the master says, actually, the, and they, they are still there. They open, they give their nectar, they smell, their, they, they survive and they give the best. And this is, yeah, one of the most examples for me, actually. Are there any particular aspects of the teaching that are particularly difficult at the moment in your life? To apply them to, on a daily basis, on a regular basis? Yes, uh, I would say at the moment, what is... Um, most challenging is to be every day connected to this big source of light. So basically to, to really feel um, the spirit going inside, coming mm -hmm. inside. And uh, yeah, to, to really um, feel this strong connection, which brings everything actually, the faith, the love, the joy, the everything <laughs> we, we need um, to, to, yeah, to really keep this um, disconnection and to, to yeah to have it every day is is uh, is really something but what helps me the most in this direction is um, the sunrise I think um, and especially when I go through difficult uh, time I, I noticed that uh, even if, of course, we know it already with the teaching, but it's important also to realize it completely, uh, personally. And yeah, in these cases, what helps me the, the, the most is to, to go to the sunrise. Exocé, from the Republic of the Congo, grew up near one of Africa's oldest, largest and most active brotherhood centers that focuses on families and on youth. She studied oceanography in France and then embarked on an international journey that deepened her spiritual connections. She describes herself as, I quote, a soul living a human experience, aiming to humbly add a little more divine light on earth with the assistance of the divine and the collaboration of my dear luminous human brothers and sisters. End quote. My name is Exocé and originally I'm from Congo, Brazzaville. It's one of the African countries um, which has received the teaching from the Master Omham when the Master was still alive. You know, the Fraternal Spiritual Center in Congo is one of the oldest, a very active uh, brotherhood with um, a focus put on, on kids, on children. I've grown up there um, with my parents. 
every time going you know to the spiritual center called Rila it's a very beautiful center with many trees around yeah that's where I come from and that's how I've received the teaching from the master from my parents and also from all the brothers and sisters who were like parents and sister big sisters and big brothers for me and who have showed me shown me the way and yeah until now so tell me, when did you first come to the Bonfin of Ilnata? Which was the first international center you went to outside Congo Brazzaville? Mm, yeah. What did you think of this place? Wherever you are, in Canada, in Australia, in Norway, or in South Africa, when people speak about Le Bonfin, it's the place to go. Yes, I felt like in heaven, I felt like I was at home. Everyone was strangers for me, but everyone was brothers and sisters for me. And I was just feeling a sense of, uh, of peace and happiness. I wasn't shy at all. I was doing everything that I could do, like speaking to people or serving in the Grand Salle. I was just feeling at home. The special thing that uh, a sister came to me and told me, are you really new here? Is this your, your, your first uh, Le Bonfin? I said, yeah. And she told me, look, but you are like at home here. She told me and I was feeling the same. Wow. That was a confirmation that I really, I really was at home. And I remember when the time came for me to leave, I couldn't believe. I was crying all morning. I don't want, and the only phrase I could say is, I don't want to go. Le Bonfait touched me. It was an experience from my soul. And until now, I, can, I, can, I could still feel, you know, all the energy of my soul, just expressing the family. I was wondering, I was just looking for, searching for, and now it was there international mm. family even even when you don't have health to move from your home to here even when you don't have money to move from your place to here just do whatever you can wow. to come and experience because it's um it's a soul experience that's anchored into your soul for years for incarnations for lives the center within us must be honored, must be considered. Um, the sunrise, the meditation, the singing, the, the music, all those activities bring, bring us to the center. So the center is our, our higher self and God, the universe, the sun. You are not occupied with your own problems any longer anymore. For me, it's just perfect. In the meantime, you left and you came back to the Bonfa to live here. What prompted you to come back and stay for an indeterminate period? I've experienced so many things and, and I've discovered so many things that was sleeping within me, um, especially for the choir. I like singing. Singing is one of my, you know, top activities. What would you tell young people, let's say late teenagers, some in their 20s, maybe 30s even, they're young as well. What would you tell them based on your life's experience today? What advice would you give them? To, to love yourself, but also to consider that every day an occasion is given to us to grow. Beings of light, of love, of divine love and divine light, we can acquire all the qualities and virtues that we need to go through those issues, those problems. And by considering those beings in our lives, we open the way so that we can be helped. So open yourself to something bigger than yourself, 
something higher than yourself. God, the universe, even nature for some people is the greatest. Just open yourself to that and, and accept and accept that life, it's okay to be like how you are, but it's also okay to open yourself to something bigger and higher. It's very essential um, to be children, receptive, but we also need to be very, um, to have discernment about who to follow in our daily life, who to surround ourselves with. Um, choose your friends with all the care, you know, the, the, the care possible. You can still live the life that you want to live. That's life of happiness. That's life of great joy. That's life of purity. That's life of uh, quietude. Uh, that's life of... Uh, Fulfillment, you can still live it being on earth. Santiago Gonzalez is not your typical astronomer. Born and raised in Bogota, Colombia, Santiago has also lived in Chile and several other countries. We recorded this interview at the Cine Claire Colline, the center of the Belgian fraternity. He works as a scientist at the University of Lisbon in Portugal, specializing in the study of supernova exploding stars, some of which are known as standard candles. My first question to him was how he found the teaching. Well, I was lucky, I guess, um, that I found the teaching very young. I was 14 years old. Um, we were living in Germany with my mother. At the beginning, I was a bit uh, mm, not that interested, but slowly, I guess she was a very good uh, she, she did it very well, and I slowly got into it, and since then, never asked myself questions about it. I, I love this teaching, and uh, has br brought me a lot of joy and understanding, meaning to my life. So the teaching is, is great because it gives you elements to live your daily life, whatever you're doing, right? So, basically, it doesn't matter what your work is, you can bring light, you can bring... Um, hope joy into what you're doing be it even breathing be it eating or doing your work right so also during my work i do try um to to go beyond just the the part of the scientific which is great and uh, but it gives it maybe a, a fuller view of the whole um of everything that you're exploring that you're investigating it can help you uh, to to fill it not to stay only with the physical outer part of things but also the inner part so I like that a lot yeah what do you tell your friends back home who are not uh, familiar with the teaching where you've just been what, what would you tell them how would you describe to an outsider if I depends on the closeness of the the person I'm talking to but if it's a close friend I would say I, I've been in a retreat and some special place for retreats and it is kind of a retreat right you're doing an interior work but at the same time you're doing something in the community as well and with the ideal of something even larger than it's the whole world and the universe why not and i think kind of going to the cent this fraternal center is going back into your center gaining a lot of that energy like going back to your son and then later when you go back to the common life let's let's say you bring back what you have accumulated you can give it uh, as a ray of light you can expand that circle basically i think that's why it's important to to come back to the center yes of all the methods of the teaching or the attitudes what is the most difficult for you generally difficult okay. and what is the most rewarding I think the uh, difficult is to, to be conscious. So when you're in the center, actually things at the beginning, maybe they're a bit hard when you come from the outer world and you're not focused, you're not concentrated. Uh, but then in the center, things generally, for me at least, uh, run smoothly and um, I enjoy every moment of it. What I find most difficult is the daily life outside of these centers, for example, um, to bring back, to keep that connection and not to to go away from that spiritual, from that uh, that 
that spiritual inner being, that, that self-awareness, let's say, that, that you have to, that the master tells you, like, be aware of your thoughts, be aware of your feelings, be aware of your words. And keeping that in every day because you have so many things to do, right? Uh, be it at work or be it in your daily things with your family, with your friends. There are a lot of things that happen and it's easy to lose that focus. And I think that's the most difficult part to keep, keep that connection with your inner uh, force, your inner uh, light, let's call it like that. that. That is the most difficult for me. And the most rewarding, um, the most rewarding, yeah, is when you are, um, sometimes some meditations perhaps, uh, or some of the, of the different spiritual practices that you can do, uh, sometimes you feel that you've accomplished something, it's maybe something just inner, only you feel it, but it's, it's, it's peace that you find or, or some joy maybe. Uh, some understanding and these things uh, only happen really when you're connected, really connected to the spiritual practice, practice you're doing and being in a, in a center helps you a lot to accomplish these things, yes. Another thing that is very interesting in the centers is, is that there is a lot of, it's not only death and uh, uh, like you, you think sometimes of spiritual, you think of yeah, uh, very. You have to be serious. You have to understand. It's a lot of wisdom, a lot of inner work, which is true. But there is also this happiness moments that I really enjoy with brothers and sisters. Uh, you can laugh a lot. Uh, you can share a lot of uh, yeah things that are there are a lot of fun, and uh, I like that. And the master was also had that that side to him, and I think it's very nice to have it also during our gatherings and to be able to live that, I, I really appreciate it. Any advice for younger people, teenagers? Yeah, what I would recommend to young people uh, is not to focus only on the external, the material, the, maybe the superficial um, in the world because there is much of it right now. And there are if the happiness won't come from outside, it will come from inside. So I truly recommend them to look in, in, inside and, and see what other people with more experience perhaps have done in regards to that spiritual uh, search, which is at the end what really gives you happiness. It won't be something from outside. Kyoko traveled from Tokyo to the Bonfin in France, bringing a suitcase full of her kimono, the traditional Japanese attire, she chose for this interview. We tried to record in a beautiful garden, but it was Mistral Day. She explained that to pronounce her name correctly, I should shape my mouth as if saying Tokyo. As skilled a language teacher as Kyoko is, I'm not sure her pupil was quite up to the task. If I thank you at the beginning already, arigato gozai mas. But at the beginning is mas. Thank you for being here. Yeah. Arigato gozaimas. Arigato gozaimas. Hi. Hi. <laughs> and it's Kyoko. Tokyo. Kyoko. 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 Tokyo. Kyoko. Oskari sama des. What does that mean? Ah. Arigato gozaimas. So thank you for being here with us today. Thank you very much for having me today, Anato. And you're wearing a beautiful dress. <laughs> what? Tell me a little bit about it. How do you call it? Uh, this is called yukata. It's a group of kimono. Uh, we uh, Japanese wear kimono, traditional uh, costume, but only occasional uh, time. Then this is for summertime. For this recording, I brought it from Japan, so <laughs> I made it short, uh, lighter version. What brought you to come to the Bonfire? Why are you here? Uh, I don't know what brought me to Bonfire. Uh, everybody told me from the uh, group. I have been to Bidenata before, and then they say you should go to Bonfire. Bonfire is a very good place, and then you want you you know you must go to Bonfire. And then I came to Bonfang. First time my Bonfang was 2014. 
Uh, it was wonderful, wonderful. Time. Perhaps I stayed about 10 days and I made so many friends from all over the world. Everybody was so nice. When you go back home, how do you describe the bonfire where bonfire. you've just been children? Yeah, I, uh, to my Japanese friends and the group of Urban of Teaching, I always talk about bonfang. Uh, bonfang is a very nice place like paradise. Uh, we also have the word in Japanese, it's called Togenkyo. Togenkyo is a very well-known word in Chinese proverb or something. And that also means paradise. So I always told them, always t tell them that how how nice Bonfang is. It's surrounded by the nature, and then you can see all, all kinds of flowers and trees and birds, and, and people are so nice. And I, I you know, I, I always tell them I, I want you to come visit Bonfang too. Oh, well, Bidenata has its own character it's the top of, middle of the mountain very high altitude and then you see the french alps over there and then you see the lake le mans is it lake le mans mm -hmm. over there it's just special scenery and atmosphere there and then uh, that's my first place visit in this t uh, group fraternity so that's a special place when you me. return home how is your life different after having been a week or two weeks at one of the centers? Oh. What changes? Oh, I'm so refreshed or reborn or developed to a next stage or whatever you can call. I feel so refreshed, so, so renewed. Um, I like that feeling. Maybe I'm purified. Well, <laughs> you know, always master always say we need to purif purify ourselves. So three bodies: physical body, astral body, and mental body. And then I'm all, always keep it in my mind, and then I try to do it. But when I'm home or when I'm working in a usual environment, oftentimes I cannot catch up with it. But when I come to Bonfang, I can con concentrate on purifi uh, purifying myself and then, you know, surrounded with any no stress environment. I can talk anything with, you know, <laughs> all my <laughs> fraternity friends and then we can share the. We, we share something very important without saying much. That's something very uh, comfortable. Uh, Mio and I co-translated this book in 2014 and then this is sold at bookstore. I was thinking what could I do and then there was a very uh, use, useful application up, up, right? it's called a Clubhouse. It's something like a Club, radio. Clubhouse. Club, Club yeah, C-L-U-B-H-O-U-S-E. Uh, it's English, so oh, everything is English, so you can download anywhere in the world and then you can even listen to it, although I speak only in Japanese. I, every day, uh, Monday through Fridays from 6 to 6.30, I read, I pick one day and then I read it. Then after that, I talk about it, uh, maybe sometimes a uh, little bit of analysis, or sometimes uh, adding some more stories behind it, and uh, master's phrases and so on, so then perhaps 30 minutes. Yeah, it's, it's very good for me too, because it's a sun, sunrise time, and then sometimes I, while I'm talking, I'm talking, I see the sunlight from my window and then I say, wow, it's, there's a, such a beautiful sunlight. Mm. I, I hope you are watching this together at the same time, nice. you know, somewhere else. In, uh, in I use that same title, Senmei no Kotoba Sanrokugo, Daily Meditation. It's, it, direct translation is Word of Life 365, but then, you know, that's Daily Meditation. Beautiful. <laughs> Arigato gozaimashita. こちらこそどうもありがとうございました。Thank you very much for having me today. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Anatole. Now we're going to do a quick station break. Before we break, I want to let you know that additional interviews will be forthcoming in future episodes, likely in autumn. Extended cuts of some of the interviews presented here and many more are available on our channel, www youtube.com forward slash at ombram 
my favorite without hesitation is Love and Sexuality. I was the first two books that I read. It was what drew me into the teaching in the first place was the way, the way that he spoke about how human beings should um, talk about the opposite sex and sexuality itself refining the sexual force into a more poetic, artistic, sublime, uh, beautiful kind of energy. It just... I need to switch to English. <laughs> oh yeah, we speak in English. Yeah, it's in English, right? That's perfect, yes. Okay. Can you speak just a couple of sentences more? Yeah, I'll need to touch that English button. <laughs> I don't know. That's a, <laughs> that's a difficult, difficult question. But to be more specific for a musician, I mean, the practice, you know, every day to be able to devote some time for yourself, you know, the sunrise meditation, you know, you take time for yourself. I think that's one of the most important things. That's what has helped me. That's how I recharge. That's how I learn music. Yeah, I prayed and asked, and I just didn't know how to how to eat anymore because, as I said, it was confusing. And when I started to be able to walk again, and I went into a store, and there was the book of the master, which is called in English, I, I chemical and magical meaning of nutrition. Just right after I, I had those prayers sent out into the world, and when, the moment I saw the book, it was clear to me it was not just an answer to my prayers, but it was also an answer to, to pretty much everything that is, is a deep question within. And that this will change everything, only by looking at the book. Evelyn, a veteran of Hollywood, where she worked on hits like Star Trek and Contact with Jodie Foster, is originally from France and became a US citizen. She's an accomplished painter with art exhibitions in Paris and Tokyo. Her journey is as diverse as it is impressive. A former board member of the FPU, the Brotherhood which was then in Los Angeles, Evelyn draws intriguing comparisons between the fraternity and the state of California. And how did she first come across the teaching? With a laugh she calls it a funny way. <laughs> it's very funny, actually, yes, because um, I was uh, following a master in Buddhism, Chinese, and um, this master was not speaking English, and so therefore we had a translator from Taiwan, and his English was not really up to notch, so I had a hard time to understand him. 18 years of Kundalini Yoga with uh, scan script for mantras, and now I have 15 years of Buddhism with Sanskrit for mantras. Well, it would be great if I can meet a, a master who speaks French. And I just let it go, but it was not like like saying like on a superficial level i really felt really in my guts so then uh two weeks later a friend of mine said oh you know uh, i have to go to palm desert to uh to babysit a house would you like to come with me you know you have a pool jacuzzi i said okay and then during that period she introduced me to her friends sally Huss, and marv and we really connected. And then uh, four weeks later, she said, well, you know, I have a friend, Italian friends, Therese Boni, who is comic. She's been a disciple of uh, the master of my Michael Ivanov. He speaks French. <laughs> and it will be great since you are in the movie industry, if you can handle a, a camera, recorder, etc." I said, of course, but I, don't I want to meet Therese first. And then when I met Therese, it was like, Oh my God, it was like a sponge, a dry sponge become filled with all the juice that I was missing so much. And then she, she said, oh, you know, by the way, uh, I have a video of when a conference with ma the master, uh, you have a video recorder, sure. So she came over and Jen puts the thing on and I swear to God, I felt he was coming out of the screen and standing before me, but but in no 
that, that, you know, fraction of seconds. Wow. And I say, okay, this is it, this is it, this is it, voilà, I'm con, je suis conquier. How has that impacted your life? What has changed as a result of having... Well, I didn't feel alone anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, yeah, I felt that I was, uh, was joining a community and not be, you know, uh, alone too much. Mm -hmm. And uh, I love... Uh, I explode in my painting, uh, much more lighter and more light colors and so on. I, see, I saw the change mm. in my, my way of approaching uh, the paintings. And uh, I'm always looking for the light, the light, the light, the light, <laughs> expressing the light. <laughs> and, um, and this is what I'm going to continue to do. What was your first impression? Well, um, I thought, oh my God, There's everything is, everybody's smiling, everybody's happy, everybody looking at me. <laughs> That's a good change. <laughs> you, you, you talked to friends in LA, back in Los Angeles. Right. And, oh, you've just been to the south of France, to, to this Bonfin. What is it like? What would you tell them? So people who are a little bit open uh, in their minds. Mm. How would you describe this place to them? Well, actually, it's a little bit like California <laughs> because everybody's smiling, everybody's nice, everybody wear white. <laughs> white California. Like Californian, um, and uh, Californian is uh, very uh, positive. Everything is positive. Mm -hmm. There's no negativity. It's like uh, even if you fail in something, you say, "Well, it's better," so you're going to bounce back. And it's going to be better. And that's a clash with, uh, unfortunately, the French society who is completely into negativity <laughs> and depression. So uh, I feel the same middle ground mm -hmm. with the fraternity and the what California. What does it mean, light? What does light mean to you? Do you use it as a metaphor? Do you use it literally or both? Well, both. Both. Uh, I think it's, it's like you um, you set back a little bit. It's like you're not emotionally involved when things bad happen. You you just stay back. You you are right in the middle of the the pathway. So therefore, of course, some bad things will happen, but uh, you just give it to the light. You don't keep it for yourself. You just give it to the light, and uh, everything resolves. You have to to resolve. The density, it's like you, you're, not, you're not so attached to things happening. You, you just say as an observer, not in it. It's like you keep, a, you are out of the personality, of the, uh, you are more into the individuals, but you look at things as a screen, a little bit outside. So it's like projecting light onto a situation exactly, and therefore seeing the situation more realistically right. because you're detached from it. Exactly. So it's you becoming the one projecting your own light. Right, exactly. Because that's the only thing we see is light. Exactly. See you. you did I it. see the light that reflects on <laughs> you. you. You got it. <laughs> Michael from Kochi, India, has a distinguished career in management, academia and literature. He's an accomplished author and translated over 20 books by Omram into Malalayam and established a public library of Omram's works. A proud father, Michael has a daughter who is a professor and a son who is a Navy officer. Just as he translates profound texts, bridging cultures and philosophies, he also embodies this ethos, fostering understanding and shining light on the intrinsic connections that bind us all. I asked him how he met or came across the teaching and at the end of that description he told me this. So this is the act that the 20 uh, books translation uh, uh, which has which gave me a, some sort of a uh, inside view of master's teaching. And in this case, uh, that's where I want to say 
uh, something very uh, personal. That means the thing that where I found uh, the meaning of my life, meaning of what I am doing through master's teaching. We have to imitate the sun. We have to learn from the sun. We have to live the sun. That has to be done. That is my first point about the teaching of the master. You asked uh, the uh, what message I would give to uh, young people. This is the message which I would like to give them. This is basically very contemporary, very uh, appealing to the thing. This is basically uh, in English, uh, the book is known as Cosmic Balance. Mm -hmm. Cosmic Balance. And this Cosmic Balance is depending on two principles, masculine and feminine. Masculine and feminine. And unfortunately, or whatever, this masculine feminine is not properly understood, even in the West. So, in, you know. in what way has your life been impacted by having been to Vilnata, to the Bonfa, in having found the teaching? How has your life changed as a result? Of life that? changed considerably because changed means not outwardly. Outwardly, I can't change because. Uh, here, people who not understand me, if I do certain things, they think I am crazy or something. Like that. I can't do that. My life has changed internally very much. Reason is, there is a new approach to things. The same thing, but the way I look at it is different. Tell me a little bit your impression when you went to the Bofa. What, what did it mean to you? What did you tell your friends when you came back to India? Yeah, what does the Bofa symbolize for you? So the impression which I have received from that place is that it is a brotherhood. The concept of brotherhood, I understood. The concept of, uh, of course, a master talks about collectivity and as well as um, brotherhood. It's not enough to have a collectivity. There is to be, it should be, uh, it should be guided. It should be permeated by brotherhood. And brotherhood means what? concern for the other. This is what I uh, I noticed in, uh, in Bonfin in my stay. This brotherhood concept is what um, uh, that is what um, impressed me on that constable. So when you say that universal white brotherhood, of course, a lot of people ask me white means what color? No, it's not color. It means concern for the other. And I, I have one more thing which I want to say is how it has helped me personally uh, about my wife, I can say. Then earlier I used to get angry with her, angry or I get annoyed with her, I'm not angry, annoyed with the fact that she, this woman doesn't understand. I, that changed, that has changed now. Uh, what I said is, she is, uh, uh, she is a person who has her rights, who are there. Let her live what they want to live. I will live what I think is correct to do. Welcome to do that. This is also a change which has come through master's uh, reading, master's teachings. Like well, that this is I... a beautiful way of ending this interview because what you just expressed is that the teaching has helped you, in fact, be much more compassionate, understanding, initially with your wife, but also with society, with everyone around you. Everybody. Is that a fair summary? Yeah, it's just a fair summary, yes. That's and right. along the way, I feel you've become a much happier, a content person. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. I am. I am. Thank you Thank very you. much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Henriette left everything at the age of 20 to live at the Bonfin where Omram taught for decades. And she returned there many times since. Henriette was trained in piano and classical guitar and, with her husband, created an award-winning bakery back in the 90s here in Sherbrooke, close to the main fraternal centre in Canada. Bakery du Feu, the secret of the famous bread, undoubtedly lied in their names, du Feu, which means off the fire. My first question was, what prompted her to drop everything to live eight years at the Bonfin? So, you see, when I was uh, really young, I yearned to meet a master, a spiritually awakened being. And for me, the purpose of my life was to improve myself, to work on myself, to become more useful and to better myself. 
and I realized early on that it would probably be within a community that I could progress faster, achieve results and develop uh, qualities and uh, virtues. And uh, living in a center 24 hours a day allowed me to completely immerse myself in a spiritual atmosphere. I could concentrate on my own spiritual centers to develop in, to carry out magnificent work, and to expand my consciousness. Can you describe what life was like at the Bon Femme back then? We really lived in a spiritual ambience all day long. And the most wonderful moments for me were the meditations at sunrise with the Master, in the presence of the Master. These were the most grand, beautiful and powerful moments. Throughout the day, we engage in exercise of mastery, meditation, breathing, prayers, seeing and, and panorhythmic. But the most important for me was listening to the talks of the Master. It is that they give me an understanding and much enlightenment on how to spiritualize all aspects of daily life. Having this knowledge is the most invaluable. And what is extraordinary is that all of these talks are accessible in centers around the world. At least in countries where there are centers. Not yet in the United States, but that will come. In fact, you live right next to a center here in Canada, Black Slovenia, the large center in Canada. And ever since you left the Bofa, you keep on returning to centers be it the Bofa, be it Black or Slovenia, or, or elsewhere. What prompts you to return to those centers? Well, for on, I really cherish the collective meditation at centers. There's a, an energy of such power when many people all together concentrate. The uh, intensity of silence, when everyone present focus on harmony, on peace and on light. One feels ascending to great eyes or uh, to find on inner center. You see, when I meditate alone, I already experience extraordinary sensation, but when I meditate at a center, surrounded by kind people who pray and meditate as well. It amplifies the sensation of peace, happiness and of fulfillment. All these individuals meditate on one and the same thing, light, and pray for that maybe one day on earth becoming a planet of peace and fraternity. It's quite evident that if you are alone in desiring something, it takes longer to materialize. But if many concentrate on the same image, the energy is more intense and the result come faster. Well, this says a lot about coming together, about the power of community. Well, we could go on for a long time here, and I'm sure you must have lots of anecdotes with the Master. We might come back to you at some future episodes. In the meantime, to conclude, is there any last idea you would like to share with us? I think it's worth stressing the importance to having a high ideal. And above all, to being aware to the power we all have to make the good, the beautiful and 
and the noble grew on this hook. So one day, Master Omram Mikhail Ivanov told me, you are connected to thousands of beings in the visible and invisible world. If you elevate your consciousness very high, you bring these same beings up with you. But if you descend, then you bring this being down with you. So that's very important to remember that. And that's what, that's what I wanted to share with you. Thank you very much, Oret. I am Felix van Frieden and I want to talk to you about a very special topic. Why is it important for everybody who want to go forward on the spiritual journey to meet spiritual brothers and sisters? So by the time the Master came around to offer ice cream, my mother said, oh no, the children have already had their sweet, they can't have ice cream. So we were sitting down and everybody was having ice cream but my brother and I and the master looked at us and he felt so sorry for us and he said, can't they have a second sweet today? Can't they have ice cream? It was that curiosity and it was so beautiful. I mean, I, I knew that there was something more and I, and I was very, I didn't, I didn't believe in God. No, I, I didn't. I, I didn't, and and slowly I found Omram and his teachings, and and ever since I've kept his books close to me. Thank you, Anatole. These were fascinating interviews. I look forward to meeting those that you interviewed, and equally as important to visit the centers I have yet to visit. Additional interviews will be forthcoming in future episodes, likely in the autumn. Extend cuts of some of the interviews presented here and many more are available at our channel, www.youtube.com forward slash at Ombram. There you can also see interviews of some who have known Master Ombram. We have other topics to cover that I'm sure you'll be interested in. Here are a list of possibilities. The Four Sacred Sciences the importance of singing from a spiritual context, an interview with a person who created a peace initiative centered around theater, aimed at uniting conflicting groups by working together. In this instance, the project involved theater activities with young Jewish and Arab participants. Astrology, geometrical figures and symbolic language, harnessing everyday opportunities for a happier life, exploring the spiritual laser and the use of colors for spiritual development, a talk about cosmic balance and discovering the eternal masculine and feminine within, and finally, perhaps an episode with interviews with people reflecting on the teaching of Ombram. Please share your thoughts and preferences in the comments section below. We deeply value your engagement and perspectives. Thank you for being a part of today's journey. And until next time, keep seeking the divine within yourself, in each other, and everywhere around you. Stay safe, stay connected, and take care.